Hello everyone, you are listening to Audiobookish, an audiobook review and discussion podcast. My name is Fahed Rahman and I'm joined by Poppy Knight. Hello. And today we're going to be discussing the books of Jill Tomlinson as narrated by Maureen Lipman. Poppy, do you want to introduce the author? Yeah, definitely. So, born in 1931, Jill Tomlinson never intended to be a writer. She trained as an opera singer and then decided to have a family whilst her voice matured. But illness intervened and she had to find another outlet for her energies. She started on a journalism course and by the third lesson decided she wanted to write for children. So she did! Jill Tomlinson's animal stories are much loved and have been best-selling children's books for nearly four decades. She died in 1976, just aged 45 years. So this was, well, these series of books were your choices. So can you just maybe talk a little bit about how you first listened to them and, you know, why you kind of wanted to discuss them a little bit? Yeah, I mean... I can't remember when, when I first listened to them for the fact that there's such a yeah big part of my childhood, really. I do know that I have a physical book of two of these, and I found it really cool, still do, because it's two books in one, and it's clever because it's the kind where you flip it on the short edge to do upside down, and you can then still read it from front to back. As this story, so there's kind of back to back. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and that has in it The Cat Who Wanted to Go Home and The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark. I don't know if that came before or after the audio, but I know that I loved that book partly because of the cool back to front bit, and I know that I absolutely adored the audio um, of both of those stories and then a lot more came basically if if one could find the cds for any more of the stories in that series then we were having them so yeah and there were a few that i've kind of listened to less that then we were (laughs) having a listen just now i was like oh yeah i'm sure i have heard this one (laughs) but i didn't fully remember it and yeah there's there's some that really stood out and basically i saw that they were on borrow box which we've talked about before. It's the app for borrowing audiobooks and also ebooks through your library. Uh, it's also the company that I work for, so that's exciting. Uh, and that was partly why I'd seen that they were on there. And so I was very keen and I thought we should have a chat about them. I was intrigued what Fahed thought and I just wanted to gush about them because these were so close, or at least probably the cat who wanted to go home, probably is my top one, was so close to being in my top five audiobooks from our very first episode. Uh, and just just wasn't the one one that I picked but yeah. um so really wanted to talk about them okay so, yeah. so Poppy sent me like a long list of like these books and I thought well <laughs> I mean they're only kind of an hour long yeah. each and I think I listened to three of them so I listened to mm-hmm. the penguin that wanted to find out the mm-hmm. gorilla who wanted to grow up and the cat that wanted to go home um these are really beautiful books yeah I'm really, they really are aren't they I'm, I'm really glad that you recommended them. I was a oh, bit good. iffy because I'm not Maureen Lipman's biggest fan. Fair. Mm-hmm. Um, but she does a, a pretty good job of yeah. narrating these books. With an author as popular as Jewel Tomlinson, I think there are a few different versions of the audiobooks out there, but the ones that right. we listened to were the Maureen Lipman ones. So let's start with The Cat That Wanted to Go Home. Yeah. Why, why does that one have a kind of particular place? in your heart and maybe maybe talk a little bit about the the plot and yeah. stuff like that as well yeah definitely okay so there's probably a few different reasons one being the fact that it was one of the two in that book for sure but then also I've always had cats in my house literally since, since before I was born we had cats and I've always lived with cats and I love cats a lot um and I think especially in this one probably wasn't anywhere near when I first listened to these books but I've listened so many times and certainly to this one so many times um that there was some overlap with my wonderful cat jeff who uh was a a lovely tabby cat and was our first tabby cat certainly my first tabby cat um and like the cat in this book has stripy fur and a spotted belly and loved being stroked the wrong way so there was a, a real connection there. And this book really is all about the love between a cat and, you know, their people, their humans. And that just really has always struck home with me. Um, I've always really loved it. And I do think that, yeah, 
Maureen does a really good job of it and I always hear that. That's why I'm not sure if how much I read the book because I definitely just always hear her voice but I yeah I listened to it so much when I was younger and it's one of those it, it comforts me you know if I'm wanting something to listen to going to sleep because I often do and I pretty much always have something on going to sleep but like ranges from like audiobooks podcasts youtube videos twitch streams yeah. <laughs> all sorts of, just noise netflix you know I always have something on going to sleep to but this is one sometimes when yeah if I'm a bit sad and I want something comforting, familiar, that ca- this is one of my absolute go-tos. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, the cat that wanted to go home, it's basically a gentle adventure story about a cat that mm. stumbles across a hot air balloon, is transported to England, and then needs to kind of her adventures on how she kind of finds her way um, back home. She's kind of a... Uh, of, of I say she what is the name of the cat <laughs> yeah it's Susie Susie, Susie. Yeah. yeah Susie she's a she's a little French cat yeah um, lives in a fishing village in France and yeah curls up in a basket because cats do they curl yeah. up in baskets in fact I literally just got a basket as a hamper thing and kept it so that um, our cat Tiara could lie in it who's also a little tabby cat I knew she would love the basket and today she has proven she loves the basket because she sat in it so yeah, yeah. love the basket so she didn't mind that this was an even bigger basket um, and only realises when she wakes up from a nap that she's over the channel and on her way to England yeah and you know she's a very determined cat um, mm-hmm. she's uh, always trying to jump in the channel to try and swim <laughs> to, to swim back <laughs> to France and it's a very gently funny book as well kind of one yeah. of the, the things that um I liked about it was the fact that the English people kind of uh, pick up on the fact that she meows in French mm-hmm. <laughs> and um I couldn't quite make out what when she was meowing in French some of the words that she was mm. Maureen Nippon was saying so maybe you could like expound on that a little yeah, bit because you listen yeah. to the listen, listen to it a little bit more often. I couldn't quite make out what what the, what the cat was saying. Yeah, I'm no, sure a, a, a zillion times. times. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is a bit weird. And I think it's one of those ones where you are asking a lot of your narrator because yeah. it's quite easy to have that written down, but then to translate what is French words but said like a cat's meowing, but you don't <laughs> want it to sound too much like they're saying the word because then that will be a bit weird. Yeah. But you want it to be recognizable as the word. And so that's a real challenge that yeah. you're asking your narrator to do. Um so yeah, so things like she, I I'm tempted to do an impression, but I've not practiced it, so I'm not <laughs> going to. But she meows Mercy. Yeah. To say thank you a lot of the time, and uh, one of the people that uh, looks after her is, is saying that she oh she has a funny meow, and yeah, so Missy is one of them. And then when she's going, when she's pre really really sure she's going to get home this time, um, she says au revoir, and her her parrot friend says it slightly more intelligibly for the um for the human and then maybe figure it out maybe what she has been saying and then one of the other things that she says um crying it is chez moi Uh, yeah what does that mean i think it's my home okay yeah yeah so yeah because she's she's wailing that her home is so far away and she really wants to go home and she keeps getting turned away from it things keep taking her back away yeah um so yeah it's it's really cool because it's one of those and this is a theme across all of the books really is that it has repetition through it. There's kind of a series of events. So in this case, it's um, she's heading down to the beach. She's going to find a way home. She sees something. She thinks, oh, yay, this will get me home. We kind of, as listeners, have an idea that maybe that might not work. Yeah. Um, and then she figures out, oh, no, it's not working. I'm so sad and ends up going back to where she's been staying and getting some lovely food. Um, but it's not fish. She prefers fish. Yeah, she prefers um, fish. <laughs> um, going back home and trying again tomorrow. And it keeps going like that. And it's a really good thing. And it's one of the things that's really well documented how helpful that is for children, having that kind of repetition in stories and things like that. So there's that. But equally, it's not boring. There's enough yeah. variation in that repetition. Like you say, there's humour in kind of the events that happen. There's so much differentiation in it and the different characters you meet and how it works that, yes, it is structured with that repetition, but in a really good way that, again, yeah, lends to that familiarity kind of thing. So you kind of know more about like the children's fiction market 
than, <laughs> than I do. What age is this kind of aimed at? Oh, I mean, I've been listening to it for ages and still will <laughs> for yeah. ages, but um, yeah. I think it's quite young. So the the thing here on Box says kind of five plus. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah. I would have thought this would have been a bit challenging for a five five six year old i think that's yeah. fair and i think it's yeah. it's probably the kind of thing where they might not get it all yeah you know yeah. at that age but as they get older they might more i think it's it's kind of the thing where i'm kind of thinking about the size of text on the book that i've got yeah. and thinking it's probably one where maybe they'd you know if they were reading that they might be reading it with their parents yeah um you know they might be reading it at school they might struggle with quite a lot of the words but it's that kind of you know it's it's possibly a stretching book but that's also really good to kind yeah. of be stretched um, by things as well and yeah i think you know maybe they might not get over and certainly like the the shame thing because it, it never explains that that's what it is yeah um so yeah but that they can probably take some fun stuff from it um, yeah. even at that age i'd reckon so of of the three books that I listened to, I think while I did enjoy the cat that wanted to go mm -hmm. home, I think it was probably my least favorite of the oh, three. Okay. I think like both the gorilla who wanted to grow up and the, the yeah. penguin that wanted to find out hit me emotionally. Mm -hmm. I, I think that like, the penguin that wanted to find out hit me particularly emotionally hard okay. mm -hmm. for just one particular line in mm. the book that had me um bawling out so let's um oh. <laughs> let's uh let's talk about the gorilla who wanted to grow up so this is yeah. a story about a young gorilla and he's with his family and he you know just wants to find out what it means to be like an adult and mm -hmm. so another podcast that i listened to your own words Becky, well, he's one of the co-hosts there. She was talking about the movement and she really loves the movement and she loves them because their stories about how to be a person with other people, how to be kind of like a human being and have like mm. um, grown up, not grown up relationships, but how to have relationships with other people. And this is what I think was at the heart of this yeah. story was kind of like, you know, how to be not just a leader within your tribe and to look after other people, but to how to manage those relationships with people that are younger than you, that are people mm. are older than you, um, with your peers and, you know, knowing when the right time to take on responsibility is as well. So yeah. there's a lot of really heavy, complex uh, stuff that mm -hmm. um, really, you know, some of the best writers throughout history have tried to tackle and she just does it like with such simplicity and yeah, such a beauty yeah. and that's so difficult yeah. so 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 difficult I mean I really kind of had to tip my hat off to to Jill for this one because there's a lot of really complicated stuff in there so I don't know mm. um what you felt about it yeah yeah i love this one this is definitely one of the ones highest up my list um of favorites for sure and one that stuck out to me and one that i have listened to a good number of times and definitely knew that i'd heard this one before so yeah i really love it i agree with you it is very much about growing up what it means to be a grown-up and his pongo the the main character gorilla in this his relationship with his younger sister is really adorable yeah um and how he pitches in with that and all the the relationships in it are really lovely uh and i've, I've always really enjoyed the story and i also probably more so listening to it this time around than um when i was younger certainly there's so much about actual you know science of the animals and yeah. you get this across quite a few of them and you know we'll go on to talk about the penguin one like the science of emperor penguins and things like that um there is things about kind of how the tribe works you know and who the silverback is and um those kinds of things where you yeah it's in that sense it's got that scientific teaching bit yeah. you know if we're saying for children or even just if you're interested in it you know the actual learning about who gorillas are, how they work, the kind of things they do is really, really interesting. And kind of connected to that is there's a real strong message that you don't really have in The Cat Who Wanted to Go Home because it's not about the same kind of animal, it's not yeah. the same kind of thing, but about like conservation stuff, about the threat of humans and how that interplays with them. Uh, that, yeah, is a really key part of it, I think. And as you say, put really simply yeah i think sometimes simplicity is 
it's misunderstood how difficult it is, is to do simple things yeah. well. Um, and I'm really glad that you brought up kind of like the, the natural science element of mm. the gorilla who wanted to grow up and the emperor penguins, because that is something that struck me um, mm. as well. And I hadn't written it down in my notes. So I'm really <laughs> glad that, that, really glad that you, you, you brought it up. Sometimes that stuff can come when it's in books, sometimes it can come across as a little bit dry, but it's never kind of, it almost seems incidental. So you're kind of getting the the knowledge kind of like, oh, you know, this is yeah. kind of the way that they, it's not kind of like lectured. Yes. Um, at yeah, you because, um, because a theme through the three books that um, I've listened to was, it is about um, younger animals trying to find their way in the world of, you know, trying to find their way home, trying to find how mm. the world around them works. Uh, yeah. and stuff so that i think that's a nice segue into giving us the knowledge about how their particular i say societies but how they're kind of like yeah um, the, yeah you know how their groups mm-hmm. operate so I, I really enjoyed that it's interesting you brought up about uh, his relationship with his younger sister like the mm-hmm. thing that really struck to me was um his relationship with his his mum and his dad yeah. and kind of like the idea, you know, someday you're going to have to take over that um, responsibility of looking after the tribe and the troop of gorillas and his mate mm-hmm. deciding, well, I want to stay alongside you and look, I I'm not going to find oh, my own yeah. group and stuff. like. That. I found that stuff really lovely and mm-hmm. um, touching um, yeah. as well. So, yeah, so I, 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 that's something that um, for me struck quite close to my heart. And yeah. Again, it's not like, so like the cat that wanted to go home, I'd say that's kind of like say, action field, but there's kind of lots mm. of incidents in there. Whereas the gorilla who wanted to grow, um, grow up, they're not that many. I suppose there are things that happen in it, but it's not kind of like, well, he does this to get to there. It's just kind of like, it's yeah. more slice of life, I think, really. Yeah, yeah. No, I can definitely see that. It is. It is more yeah following through a story it's certainly less regimented kind of repetition um thing but there is still some sort of element of you know he's finding out this new thing about growing up and stuff like that and i think just going back as well to what you were saying about those relationships and obviously there's to some extent where that is coming away from the natural sciencey stuff you yeah. know <laughs> we're not saying you know your kids should take everything in this as gospel of, of truth for yeah. how they work but compared to a lot of other stories that you know personify animals and things it has some real root in the um in the natural world in kind of how that works and also yeah there are a lot of very certainly with gorillas um very much similar to ours with relationships and stuff aren't they with how closely related we are and stuff yeah. so um yeah, that was just a quick note on that. But yeah, it's it's less. There is there is kind of a big action part. Um, yeah. but yeah, it, it's less kind of action and more their day to day and that real like to get the character progression across an hour. And I can say this for a lot of the books as well. To get the character progression of the main character across the hour is really impressive as well, isn't it? It's not a lot of time. Yeah, um, it's not a lot of time. Um, and I th- I think it's. It does help that throughout all the books there is. I wouldn't. Is it a big cast of characters? I do feel like there's a lot of people that you get to meet across all the yeah. books. Um, but yeah, to to kind of you get a firm idea of who kind of everyone, mm. um, everyone is. And yeah, the, you know, Pogo. I think he's probably my favorite pro- protagonist throughout yeah. the the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the three groups. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think the penguin that wanted to find out is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. um of the three and it's about a young emperor penguin and he if i remember correctly it's a while since i listened to it but two weeks ago sorry Um, it's fine um he he's he doesn't have like a mum or a dad to look after him so he's kind of adopted by this uh i don't don't, don't if the right word is like elder statesman of like the penguin community and he's kind of like you know yeah go ahead yeah no so i just because i think that if i remember correctly so i think this is kind of a lesson about the natural world thing there about how sometimes if there's abandoned eggs and also a male penguin without an egg then they'll go and adopt it and that's kind of yeah that is a really nice backstory for that character is showing that little scenario where that happens but yeah i'm pretty sure from some nature things that i've watched that that is the case and yeah in emperor penguins um and i think a lot of other penguins once the eggs are laid they then look after the eggs for a while while the females go out to sea 
and um, get a load of eat a load of fish yeah, <laughs> as yeah. many fish as they can yeah. um so yeah but yeah in this case it's not actually otto's dad that's looking out for him it is another penguin that found his egg um and picked it up so. yeah and um there's one particular line in this where um the penguin sorry no don't be sorry at all with the penguin um is leaving um otto and yeah otto asks him to stay Mm-hmm. And um, the penguin says, "I need you to help me to look after myself because I need to go and feed." And it just, yeah, um, it just really reminded me of my mum because she never, she never really did that. She never really took time out yeah. to like take care of herself. And uh, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Yeah, it just, um, yeah. So it's just that one line really got to me and. Mm-hmm it's a really um it's a really beautiful book um sorry um no need so, to be sorry at all um so the way um penguin societies uh operate is uh, after a certain age you know the the males that have been looking after these kids have to go back into the sea and feed and they suddenly they have to find someone else uh new to look after him so I think they say like aunties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And these aunties come in and they form this community and they're feeding, they start feeding um, these penguin chicks. And also kind of like, because he's the the first chick to hatch, he's got kind of like a leadership mm-hmm. position and he has to kind of like pass down these facts and stories that have been told to him by all the other um, uncle and father penguins. And I really like that kind of um, aspect of it as kind of like, yeah. he wants to, know things because he needs to kind of share it along among the the younger chicks and he has to kind of quite similar to pogo in a lot of ways he has to kind of <laughs> take that um caring responsibility of of the younger chicks yeah as well yes definitely and i think these are two very similar stories they have the very same kind of theme of finding out about um, themselves, what's expected of them, taking on responsibility for the younger ones, wanting to grow up, but maybe being a little bit nervous about it as well. Yeah. Um, and that kind of thing. And yeah, they are very similar books. But again, like I was saying about the repetition in The Cat I Want to Go Home, that's not a bad thing. You yeah. know, it's reinforcing those lovely ideas to kids of, of that kind of growing up, of what childhood is and those kinds of things and again so one of the other stories is the aardvark who wasn't sure and that again is quite similar he's not so sure about growing up and what it means to be an adult aardvark but he's going to figure it out and kind of stuff and the otter who wanted to know is another one so there's a a load of themes in there that are really similar and then there's the hen who wouldn't give up is more similar to the cat who wanted to go home because that's she's determined to get to a place yeah. and she fails getting there for quite a while and she's determined to have a family on her own and that you know she has a a lot of trials there so you could kind of group them in in those ways yeah i think the thing that i, I particularly liked about both the gorilla who wanted to grow up and the penguin that wanted to find out is that mm-hmm. children sometimes do have an anxiety about what it means to be a grown-up and oh, change definitely. and change yeah. and um like i think one of the things that kind of um, struck me a little bit is kind of these would be like really good books to give to kids that are maybe going from junior to primary school, kind of that age mm. where you're kind of like, oh, I'm going into kind of like big boy school now. And I think kind of like explaining, OK, there's going to be some challenges and some changes, but it's just a, a natural process really and yeah. you, you, know, you know there are things that are going to be out there that are scary and stuff like that but you've got mm-hmm. people around you that are going to help guide you and you know older kids and younger kids and yeah so don't be too anxious about it. so I think that's the, the, the you know the one thing I've particularly liked about both the gorilla that wanted to grow up and the penguin that wanted to yeah. find out is kind of like yeah growing up can be this big scary thing but it's mm-hmm. also this wonderful adventure yeah. um as, as well yeah definitely and also that it's okay to take your time yeah you know, it, it's you don't have to be there yet. You don't have to be a big grown up um, right now. You know, kind of nudging in those directions, sure, maybe, but you don't need to be rushing it. Which, yeah, I think is really nice as well. And it's okay to ask questions. I've had, I think that's yeah. the, the, the the other thing that I really liked about both those books is that um, mm-hmm. both uh, Otto and Pongo would ask questions, and they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I think sometimes kids don't want to be seen to not know 
stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I think, I, I think that's the other thing I kind of quite liked about that is kind of maybe it will encourage kids to actually just ask questions, whether they get good answers or not, I think is <laughs> yeah. it's an entirely different um is an entirely <laughs> different question as well. But yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, like kids go through a phase of, you know, why, 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 yeah, why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on everything. And yeah, it's encouraging that. There's a reason kids go through that phase. It's because it helps them discover about the world. Yeah. You know, so even if there's maybe a little bit of, um, oh, you ask a lot of questions, yeah. maybe said in some of these, it, the, the adults around are very much supportive of that and encouraging of that. And that is a really good example for kids to hear that, yeah, it's okay to ask questions and learn and, yeah, be supported. And that's definitely, yeah, much nicer than you know, why are you asking so many questions? Just <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about Maureen Lipman's mm-hmm. narration. I think across all the books I listened to, I mean, it's, it's just the three books. I think she did a really good job of capturing the characters mm-hmm. really well. And all three books, even though there's kind of maybe similar themes running through, the characters are still really different. Yes. And she yeah. does a really good job of that sometimes when you're listening to the same voice over and over again you kind of the, the characters can kind of sound similar but she, i think she did a really good job of separating all Definitely. the characters out so that each book had its own feel which yeah. coming from the same narrator i think is really quite impressive Oh, agreed, definitely. And I think there's some kind of, um, a little bit of a nifty trick in there with kind of accents and stuff. So kind of the, like, American-y style one, um, and there's like a, a kind of a scousy bit one and one, and, and that definitely helps, because I don't think there's any reason why those characters needed those accents, yeah. you know what I mean? They're not like for geographically where they are, that's stated in the text, um, but that's kind of used to help differentiate. And yeah, like you say, it was it was probably done with knowing that someone might listen to all of this series or some of this series yeah. you know not just kind of thinking about the book in isolation and how we're going to distinguish these separate characters but really thinking about it across the whole and yeah it's good to know that you think that worked out well and i think so too and then even within the books i agree this so it's so different and going back to like the cat who wanted to go home and um, where obviously the french accent in that does yeah. have a bit of placing yeah. uh, on it but um there's so many characters in that so many and ones that just kind of come up incidentally um when she's on her journeys and yet they're all really different you yeah. know maybe only if you've listened to it quite as many times as me but i yeah. bet we could do a quiz where you're like which character is that and it was like boom i, I yeah. know that voice yeah. <laughs> i know who that is the yeah. obs- i might not yeah. name them right but yeah. i know which obscure little character that is and stuff like that and um yeah i think that was yeah. really good i mean I, I, it's a good point that you make because I'm, I'm listening to an audio book at the moment and the narrator does a really good job but some of the characters especially some of the male characters do kind of sound quite similar mm. and she, you know I didn't appreciate how good Maureen Lipman was at kind of like <laughs> doing kind of male voices. She, you know, it's really quite <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, yeah. Did, you know, these series of books have turned me around on Maureen. Yay, Lipman. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, and I'm glad because it would have been a shame if you got to kind of the end of three hours and were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no um, yeah. So I think these series of books I would like firmly recommend for people of all ages really i mean uh yeah. you know i mean like i said they're kind of the penguin that wanted to find out really did make me genuinely cry um and kind of the rest of the books that i've i mean i am going to probably i didn't have i'm not saying i didn't have time i just didn't get around to kind of listening to um some yeah of the very other ones, um mainly because when i tried to borrow them from borrow box they were kind of like there's like a massive waiting list which i think is kind of does so popular <laughs> they are they're really really popular they're only um an hour long each I've, i haven't checked out the prices on like audible or kobo or anything like this but i can't imagine they'd be too expensive but you know mm-hmm. they're, they're on borrow box or or libby i think they'd be nice books to check out for you know for, for, for your kids or just for yourself really mm-hmm. so yeah thank you thank you um poppy for that is uh i, I really did enjoy I'm so so glad that you did and yeah, yeah it was really nice to listen again and because like you say kind of fitting them in there's some of these that yeah I've listened to over and over again and I think I've gone looking for Kai wanted to go home because I wanted to listen to it and on my new phone I haven't got my CD version yeah. crossed over to it yet so it was fine not on Barbox but um 
I wouldn't have necessarily listened to these ones again and the ones that I just crammed on two times speed earlier to, in time for this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, recording uh, again for a, for a while if it weren't for this. So that was really good. And yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you love them. And I echo your thoughts. I think definitely get your kids to listen to them because I loved them as a yeah. kid and I think they will as well. And also yourself. And there's a lot of people always say this all the time, but there's a lot that you pick up as an adult um, f- with kids content. Yeah, that you didn't notice before, and I don't mean like lewd jokes hidden in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's not the case of this one. A lot of kids yeah. stuff that I like, yeah. yes, but not yeah. the case with these ones. Yeah. But um, but a lot of that stuff about you know, isn't it sweet about things and kind of looking nostalgically, maybe about your own childhood or other kids you know or whatever about that growing up. And if you have pets, the how much Susie wants to get home, yeah, and the love she has with the boys there is <laughs> incredible. Yeah. So many yeah. reasons for you to listen. Yeah, so that was um that was really nice, Poppy. So uh yeah. cool. So if you've got any recommendations that you'd like us to check out, please email us at audiobookishpod at gmail.com and please subscribe and share the podcast on your social media, guys. It really helps us grow and um, put more episodes out. Mm-hmm. Okay guys, thank you and uh bye. Thank you so much. Bye.